nice trip. <laughs> Dad, he's weird. Head off, head off. Hello, and welcome to the Art of Engineering. Today, we're going to look at a two transistor QRP transmitter. On key down, it goes to close enough to 190 uh, milliamps. I got some stations that were in uh, Canberra and New South Wales. We have a tone coming out, which is nice, but we're still going to have some issues. We always have some issues when we're home brewing. Hi there, folks. Some exciting news. Guess what I have done? No, I have built a transmitter and I'm very proud of myself. Now, admittedly, it's simple and it's very ugly. Uh, it's a two transistor transmitter, transmitting on the, damn flies, transmitting on the 80 meter band, 3.5 megahertz. And I'm not sure how much power it's putting out. In a moment, we'll chuck it on the amp meter and we'll just have a look at how much um, current it's drawing. That'll give us maybe a rough idea. What I do know is that uh, the transmit transistor gets a very, very warm when I've got key down. So it's probably only a matter of time before I blow that up. I will do a quick demo of this transmitter. And I'm hoping that if it puts out enough power and if the antenna is going to behave itself, I might even be able to either get into a reverse beacon see how far this actually can go. And it's only going to be in the milliwatt range. I reckon it's going to be like five or 600 milliwatts maximum. Or if I'm really, really lucky, maybe even manage to get a QSO on it. So we will see how all that goes shortly. And we'll go on a little transmitter journey together because this homebrewing stuff, it's simple, it's fun, and it's gear that um, might not work as well as the bought stuff, you'll at least have a little bit of an idea of how it works. You'll have to spend a little bit of time troubleshooting the things that come up and the issues that come up. And in the end, what this hobby is about, I believe, is development of equipment, learning concepts and experimentation. Because really in the true ham spirit, that's why ham radio was made. That's why we have ham radio. Uh, this is the Pixie file from the gqrp.com site. Uh, the organization is called uh, GQRP Club, and the journal that they produce is called Sprat. And if you're into QRP, you've got to go and visit them, and I think you've got to become a member. And this is a great resource, and it's all the different iterations of the Pixie. Now, you probably know the Pixie from the Chinese version. You can buy a kit of online. Various people have played with this circuit, but all the different organizations and countries and clubs that have grabbed this circuit have come up with their own little version of it and they're basically chronicled in this document that you see before you. And I will put a link in the description below in my video. And while you're down there um, clicking on that link and looking at this wonderful document full of great ideas, you might wanna just uh, reach across and go, hit subscribe maybe and, and write a nice comment for me because I'd really like to hear from you, hear what you think of the videos, tell me what you like about them, what you don't like about them, as long as it's not my hair color because there's nothing I can do about that. I'm a clown. And that's just a sad fact that I'll have to live with for the rest of my life. So if we pan up, um, we will come to the design that uh, I used for my transmitter. And it's this design here. It's called the, uh, the Alva. And this part down the bottom here, I actually use this on my uh, receiver in the end, LM386 amplifier. It's the first one I actually got to work. Is that Working with a LM386 is, is um, it's tricky. Anyway, so basically everything that's above my hand is the actual transmitter. And you don't need to worry about being able to see all of this because this transmitter design, like I said, I'll put a link and you just go to the document and go to the Alva. Okay, the Alva, which is on page 10. Okay, so you can see here in receive mode, we're, we're dealing with a current of about 6.2 milliamps. And on key down, it goes to close enough to 190 uh, milliamps. So 190 milliamps is, give me a moment to think. I need some of that Jeopardy music. Ding, 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 ding. 
Yeah, so simple Ohm's law, um, power equals current times voltage. We're looking at a terminal voltage on the battery of roughly 13 volts. It probably drops a little bit when you hit transmit uh, 12, say 13 times 0 0.1, 0 0.19. You're looking at about 2.4 watts. So it'll be two and a bit watts of power consumed. And uh, so it just depends on how much is actually getting to the dummy load. And I would assume that, uh, you know, like I said, we're looking at a, a milliwatt uh, range rather than uh, the watt range. But uh, hey, um, it is better than nothing. Well, we've got the crappy software defined radio video in the link below. It's my review of this. It's a clone uh, SDR and it is absolute rubbish. But I'm using it to just to monitor the... Uh, output from this little transmitter that I've built so I'll show you that shortly so we've got we have a tone coming out which is nice but we're still gonna have some issues we always have some issues when we're homebrewing this is a version of the pixie uh, a Swedish version actually but without the receiver section um, it's got a color burst crystal that's commonly available at uh, 3.5795 I think it is and that's in the 80 meter band that's a problem because <laughs> At the moment, uh, the receiver, the direct conversion receiver I've built, I got some um, stations last night, so it is working. I don't know how sensitive it is and how well it works, but I was receiving, I got some stations that were in uh, Canberra and New South Wales, so I don't think I got anything that was interstate, but at any rate, it was receiving signals, but at the bottom end of the band, and this is a little bit further up, so I have some issues. This will only cover a very small section of the band, my DC receiver, so we have um, a little bit of a problem and the keying also I'm not that happy with it I'll just um, flick the camera over to the side here and you can have a listen to the keying and the other problem is that the software defined radio uh, has a delay so <laughs> it's very very hard to use side tone that's out of sync with what you're sending it just throws you off really really badly I also had some issues with key bounce as well I managed to sort that out um, had to sand back the contacts on the on the key and whatnot Seems to be behaving itself. Here more. goes nothing uh, on this attempt. So that is my attempt at a CQ call. We are presently running this system into a 50 ohm dummy load and uh, we're sniffing it with the, like I said, with the SDR radio using the supplied antenna and that's what's allowing you to um, hear that side tone. But like I said, there is a delay between when the key goes down and when the, and you actually hear it on the, on the um, computer. It's very off-putting. That's me going QRT. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this colorful little journey into the making of a QRP transmitter. Now, I honestly believe that a transmitter hasn't lived until it's done a QSO. So we are going to endeavor to make a QSO even if I have to cheat and try and find someone on Facebook nearby, I'm going to try and put some distance between me and the transmitter and we'll hopefully have a QSO on it. Um, I've really enjoyed making this video and I'm really enjoying sharing my journey back into ham radio with all of you. So please remember to like and subscribe and please leave a comment below. Um, maybe you're sick of the wig. I certainly am sick of the wig, but you can see why I need to wear it. Um, 73s. And I'm hoping to see you again in another video very shortly. Now, I'm going to try and make as many as possible in the next week or so because I'm heading back to work for the next couple of weeks and I'll be casually teaching. So that'll be very, very busy. And then I'll be back at university trying to finish my second year of engineering. So it's probably going to impinge on my ham radio a little bit. 
Um, I'm gonna try not to let it do that, but it's, it's most likely gonna do that. I have ordered another kit. So I've got two kits to build now. I've got the uh, QRP Labs QCX Mini, which is a seven megahertz CW only transmitter with um, CW decoding, which I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna try and be a proper Morse person and take it by ear, but it's nice to have it as a backup. And something that I said I wasn't gonna do, I've already ordered a VHF handheld, a Baofeng, which I'm gonna plug into the prepper antenna. Link below for that, uh, for that video on, on that antenna. And I've ordered a kit, another kit, OzQRP. And OzQRP does a double sideband 3.5 megahertz transceiver. And uh, I looked at that and I thought, God, it's so, it's very, very affordable. I think it's like 150 bucks or something like that. It's a very low a QRP again. And it's obviously gonna allow me to get onto the voice band some 3.5 megs as well. So um, that might be a rig that I can take away with me when I go kayaking perhaps. Anyway. Um, and that'll be in our future videos as well because my other love is to go out in kayaks and um, I'm thinking, hey, what better way and what safer thing to do than to take away some ham radio gear in case you get bitten by a snake or fall off a cliff. Thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next video. 73.